Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Gaming City Com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. One of the stories which has recently rocked the IT world without question is Brian Krinich resigning from his position as CEO of Intel. The reason stated for his departure is very simple. He had a relationship with a co-worker at Intel. While this relationship was reciprocal, it is reported that it is heavily frowned upon at Intel and, well, that was the reason he decided to leave the company. But there is an interesting article which is going around at the moment. It is linked in the video description. This report by the Register alleges that Krinich was not fired because of this, which, by the way, is the opinion of many outside of the company. Instead, he was fired from his recent actions. But the straw that broke the camel's back was apparently an interview where, when he was speaking with an analyst, he believed, he said that he believed that it is possible for 15 to 20 percent of Intel's server market share to be gobbled up by AMD's Epic processors. Of course, what we did as a tech channel and pretty much everyone else in the world did is immediately latch onto that. That is a big announcement from Intel, they're essentially saying that we know our competitor's product is extremely, well, competitive, and that there is a good chance that they are going to take a large and significant chunk of our yearly revenue. How much? Well, estimates are around 4.5 to 4.8 billion US dollars a year. That is a lot of cash and obviously has caused Intel shares to slump a little. According to an insider at Intel who has been speaking to the register, obviously they do not want to be named, Intel office affairs are not uncommon. Otelli, who is the former CEO of Intel, he actually died last year, was, and I quote, Otelli was notorious for shagging around and even boasted about it. And Intel does actually have uh, internal rules which do allow for relationships between staff who do not work together but there is a non-fraternization code for managers. So if you're seeing, overseeing someone directly or indirectly or have a measure of control over their job, then you're not supposed to get entangled, but it can still happen and is commonplace. And they have a set of procedures for dealing with such a situation. So if the boss comes clean to HR and admits the issue, then quite typically the person who they are fraternizing with will be moved to a different department and nothing's really said too negatively. They won't get in trouble, they won't be fired, they won't have to be seriously reprimanded. Think about it, you're human, right? If you're working in an office 8, 10, 11 hours a day, at least five days a week, who else are you going to be meeting? It's most likely you're going to meet someone at work, particularly in an organization as large as Intel. Quite frankly, you can't help who you end up in a relationship with. So to penalize someone for being in a relationship with someone they meet at work would be just absolutely silly. So instead, Intel seems to have developed a rather sensible, at least in my opinion, way of doing, uh, dealing with things. They say that if you come clean, if you admit your feelings rather than trying to hide them and making things really awkward, then it's fine. They just, I can just imagine that they don't want a position where your relationship, you could end up in an argument or you can end up like, you know, having sex in the cupboard. And that obviously could be disruptive to the workplace. So instead they will simply move that person to a different department. Things do get a little dicey alone if you try to hide it. If you try to hide it and then they find out, then one of you can be reprimanded and typically you can be forcibly separated. And that's when it can become a little weirder. But from Brian Krenich's point of view, that does not seem to be the case. And once again, according to the source, and to be honest with you, I think it backs up logic. I mean, like, I remember when uh, Brian did say that, yeah, we could be losing 20% of our market share. I was like, really? You're admitting that? Like, Intel, at the end of the day, have <laughs> one thing that they're trying to do, right? And that is they're trying to make money, just like every business. That doesn't mean that they are a sinister organization. That doesn't mean that they are evil. That doesn't mean that, you know, that they are going to sacrifice baby lambs every morning. That just means that they are trying to run a business. And one of the ways you run a business is by being as confident or appearing as confident as possible in your products. And it was quite weird, actually. I remember when I watched the Computec 2018 briefing and you saw... Brian there and he did not look that confident. He looked kind of like dejected. Um, and I did think, well, maybe, you know, it's possible he was tired. I don't know the guy personally. For all I know, his cat died that morning. 
but I don't, you know, most of the time presenters tend to be somewhat more boastful on stage. As much as I have actually criticised Raja Kodori because I said that he's not the greatest of presenters, sometimes he can be very stiff and scientific when he's speaking, and that's not a bad thing, that's not criticism of the man, I'm just saying that I think he needed to be more, ex more, how can I put it, more passionate sometimes, and by passionate I don't mean that he didn't love what he did, instead I mean passionate as in talking in a in a plainer way and to really rile up the audience, which by the way is something that I think Jensen Huang is really good at, and even Lisa Su. And by the way, just as a small trivia piece for you, did you know that Jensen Huang and Lisa Su are related? I'm just going to wait for you to Google that. And no, I'm not kidding. You seriously can Google that. It was actually just revealed recently. Yeah, anyway, these things are more the reason you subscribe to us. Anyway, um, so I'm not really surprised that Brian was let go of. At the end of the day, the board just probably felt that that was taking it too far. And obviously, you as the CEO are the face of the company. So when the CEO says that, it's different if it was Bob Down in engineering that said that, but if the CEO says that 20% of our market share in this particular area could be gobbled up, it's not a good look for the company. Now on to TSMC's 7NM process and NVIDIA. So there has been an awful lot of news coming out from TSMC. You might recall that they are going to be instrumental in the production of 7NM silicon for AMD. Most notably at the moment, it's going to be the Vega uh, 7NM pro uh, GPUs, which we've discussed a couple of days ago. And of course, they are expected to be helping in production for Zen 2 as well later this year or possibly next year. We have also learned from the website DigiTimes that they will also be producing orders from Bitmain, NVIDIA and Qualcomm, and the majority of those orders will be carried out in the first half of 2019. Just so we're clear, NVIDIA use currently 12NM for their Volta series of processors. Most specifically, it's 12NM FFN. By the way, the N there stands for NVIDIA. In other words, it is a process specifically used by the company. So it would appear that the next generation of GeForce cards will indeed still be using 12NM. And most likely, of course, we're going to see the introduction of those GPUs over the next couple of months, although there has not been an exact date. The rumours, just to remind everyone, it does appear that we're going to see them end of July slash early September, although obviously that release window keeps changing like the tides. So if we don't end up seeing them until March 2019, well, it's not my fault. So what does this mean? Well, it looks like NVIDIA are definitely going to be jumping on the 7NM bandwagon. Once again, according to DigiTime slash TSMC, the first half of 2019 is we're gonna, when we're going to start to see bulk production of 7NM products from NVIDIA, as well as the other companies that I've mentioned other than AMD. So there is, of course, a question there. Are we going to see the G-forces hit 7NM immediately, or are we going to see it for more the server-orientated GPUs, HPC, and then later on, we gamers get a taste of it? If I had to guess, and this is pure speculation on my part, it could be totally wrong, but I think we're going to get 12 NMG forces, whatever architecture that happens to be based on. Let's just say for the sake of this conversation, it's uh, Turing. So let's say it's based on Turing. Most likely that, at least in my opinion, is going to be a derivative of Volta. Oh, some changes here and there, probably reduced deep learning performance and perhaps FP64 performance and perhaps even FP... Uh, just FP16 performance perhaps cut, maybe they don't have the tensor cores or the number of tensor cores is reduced. It most likely will have a different memory control, the GDDR6, I'm guessing, and so on and so on. In other words, it will be cut down and specifically designed around gaming. And I feel that that is going to launch in the late third quarter slash early fourth quarter of this year, and it will be based on 12NM FFN. Then I feel, according to these quotes, we're going to see NVIDIA move to the 7NM process. So we're probably going to see this as the follow-ups of the Volta cards in the data center. And then, of course, eventually, perhaps later that year, NVIDIA will trickle out their next graphics card for us customers. It's going to be fascinating, though, because don't forget, AMD have confirmed that they're currently in the process of creating the 7NM GPUs. And accordingly, they're going to start shipping out 7NM Vega this year. But of course, process size does not necessarily equate to faster performance, and therefore 7NM versus 12NM 
at least in completely different architectures, does not necessarily mean that AMD win, Nvidia lose. Oh, and another small piece of news from TSMC, they're going to start risk production of the 5NM process in the first half of 2019, with volume production scheduled to start in the latter part of that year, 2019. And how much monies have they invested in this? 25 billion US dollars. That is a significant chunk of change, my friends. And also on the subject of NVIDIA, because we're full of bonus news here on RGT, it's also been calculated that NVIDIA have had a very lucrative contract with Nintendo for the Switch console. How much? Well, according to The Motley Fool, about 18% of NVIDIA's gaming revenue was thanks to the Nintendo Switch. And this is because, of course, it sold about 17.8 million consoles. That is an awful lot of consoles, I have to admit. I was actually surprised how much I personally like the Nintendo Switch. I'm curious to hear what others think of it, the system as well, so do let me know in the comments below. And particularly tell me what perspective you're coming from. Are you typically a console gamer? Are you particularly, oh, sorry, a typically a PC gamer? Uh, do you play a lot of Nintendo systems in the past? Personally, I have owned multiple Nintendo systems, but I will say that the Switch is one of those consoles that I've actually put the most time into recently, and I really love the system. I have to confess, I was kind of addicted to Super Mario, honestly, I've got to admit. And it has, as I've mentioned a couple of times, got me through a few plane journeys. But anyway, uh, getting back to the news, 17.8 million Switch units have been sold during the fiscal year of 2018, and according to NVIDIA, they are making around $55 of revenue per Switch sold thanks to its takeover processor. That is a good chunk of change. I imagine that AMD are somewhat lamenting the loss of that particular contract, but of course they didn't have chips which most likely would have suited the purpose, just like NVIDIA, of course, didn't have a chip which suited the purpose of the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One at the time. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. But I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.